walk around here in the woods in New Hampshire. Let's go see what we can find. Oh, this habitat is so beautiful. I'm just in with a bunch of pines kind of running along the side of a river. And there's just mushrooms and little bits of fungi and lichen and slime molds and stuff everywhere. There's some painted swellus. It's all old. But the ferns are gorgeous. The wet wood is covered in all sorts of stuff. Oh man, what a cool bit of habitat here. It's just so gorgeous and peaceful being out here. Ooh, look at these beautiful little waxy caps. They have wide space gills. They're super slimy and slick. Kind of look like chanterelles. I keep thinking that they are chanterelles, but they're not, even though they do have these decurrent gills. But they're not as meaty, and they don't have an actual solid flesh like a cantharellus. Instead, they're kind of stringy. But uh, they are gorgeous. Beautiful little wax caps there. Whew. So slimy, so fragile. But absolutely gorgeous. Look at those gills. Oh, look at this chanterelle! <laughs> Gorgeous, a beautiful cantharellus. Ooh, look at that. It has those gorgeous to current ridges that run down the stipe. That is a beautiful chanterelle. Those are relatively easy to identify. They should have this bright golden yellow flesh, be pretty firm with white flesh inside. They have ridges instead of true gills. Uh, and they're going to be growing usually not in big clusters and often just on the ground instead of at the base of a tree. Familiarize yourself with a jack-o'-lantern mushroom and you should be safe to forage chanterelle mushrooms. Ooh, this is not a chanterelle, but it sure looks like it. It's what's known as a woolly chanterelle or turbinellus. All right, look at that. So this does have decurrent ridges like a true cantharellus, but this is actually more related to Romeria and Gomphidiaceae. Uh, it has a sort of deep vase-like top. It's all red and sometimes it's kind of scaly. Um, these are a little bit toxic. They contain a organic acid that's not good for our kidneys if we eat too much. But apparently you can kind of scrape it off, the red part and the gills, and then cook it up and eat it. Um, they do that in India and Mexico. But there you go, it's a turbinellus. Very meaty. Two little jelly babies, look at these. These are Leotia. They are an Ascomycete jelly fungi, and they are just strange little boys. Um, growing here on the forest floor, these little wobbly yellow things. As they get older, they tend to stain a little green. There's another species too that is completely green, they call those chicken lips. But I think these are just normal jelly babies. They are Leotia lubrica. And you can eat them, but you definitely wanna cook them first and they really don't have any flavor. They're just kind of jelly -y. They're good for candies. Black-footed polypore. Check out that black foot. Ooh, the cutest of little salamanders, hey, buddy. Oh, you are so gorgeous. Wow. And these guys are small, look at that. There's my finger. It's just a little boy. Ooh, look at this slime mold. That is the honeycomb slime mold, Ceratomyxa. That's pretty cool. Back standing polypore, Maripilus. Steps. That's so cool. Wow. Beautiful pallid bully. Look at that. It'll stain a little bit blue. I'm gonna rub it. Immolaria, the pallid bully. So cool. Woo! Is this gonna stain blue? Oh yeah, it is. Wow, that's a wild blue color. This is not psilocybe, despite the fact it's staying blue. It is a bolete called Jaraporus cyanescens, cornflower bolete. But it stains very, very blue when you touch it. But it does not contain psilocybin. So not a terpy mushroom, even though it is very, very blue. Ooh, Tilopolis. 
Probably Tilopolis Plumbo Violacea. It's been eaten up by bugs, but it's got those nice tight white pores. They don't really stain blue, but they do turn a little brown. That's pretty cool. Beautiful kind of velvety purple top here. Very suede-like. This is a very bitter mushroom. You don't want to eat it, but it has some pretty good taps. Wow, check out this chunk of lichen that fell down. It's all lit up by the golden hour light. It's so pretty, what gorgeous fronds. And these little brown parts are where it's making its spores and reproducing the fungus. So all these little black pits are the parathesia where the spores are produced. This is Xyleria polymorpha, dead man's finger. Looks like a big back black lump. When you open it up, you can see that along the outside, there's all these little pits and dots, and that's parathesia where spores are being produced. Um, but the inside's kind of like white and fleshy, squishy. Uh, and these things will last for a really long time, continue putting on spores. It's all the black stuff on my hands. Uh, wow, look at these cinnabar oysterlings. They are so intensely red. That is gorgeous. They're just all over this log.